to James Patterson. This is the eighth short video and we finally got at long last to a discussion about lean auditing itself. And then I'll come on to agile auditing and then the blend uh, shortly after this. So based on all the things that we've learnt in terms of background and in terms of lean, the key idea around lean uh, auditing is to say, who are the real key customers for an internal audit department? Is it the audit committee? Is it executive managers? Is it the managers that we're auditing? Or what's the role in relation to regulators and auditors? Or indeed, is there somebody else we need to be thinking of when it comes to our key customer? And then are we really clear what adds value? I mentioned the Kano technique. So this technique of lean auditing looks at delighters, satisfiers and dissatisfiers and really analyzes what the internal audit department is doing and saying, what's the internal audit department doing to dissatisfy the business? How often is the internal audit department delighting the organization? You can think about that for yourself if you're watching this either with an internal audit hat on or an audit committee or some other function. And then finally, this comes back to the whole idea of flow. Do we have the appropriate role for the internal audit department, both as a whole and in individuals within the internal audit department? Do they have the right ways of working? Very often there's an audit methodology which guides what is done. It's hard to put it this way other than to say, do the internal audit department get it? Do they have the right mindset? to do constructive work in the business or are they largely in a kind of blame mode? And then the other thing is, to what extent really is the internal audit department able to change and adapt itself? Now, many audit departments, good ones, will have adapted themselves a lot as a result of the COVID pandemic. But are they really a department that changes or are they very much kind of stuck in traditional, slow, old ways of working? If you've got a department that feels very much, audit department feels very much stuck in the mud, lean auditing techniques could be really important to shake up what the audit department is doing. So what we're aiming for is greater clarity on who the customers are and what adds value. We're aiming for a real clarity about the role of the organization and the start and the audit organization the staff that we need how intelligence is used so that what audit does is joined up with other people the right kind of plan so that the right work is done not simply doing stuff that's already known you very often get audit departments that audit known issues but not always to add real value to the organisation. And then you need uh, the right tools for the audit department, both in terms of methodology and audit tools, and really able to give insight. You know, if there's one key theme going on at the moment with internal audit departments, is don't just tell me what I already know. It's the so what and why does this matter and where else does this matter? And how much should I care? So that when audit makes an action, and obviously there's lots of people competing with the audit committee and senior management to, for them to take action, that the actions that audit is calling out are really the right actions for the organisation. And then I mentioned to you the SIPOC technique in the context of lean and the SIPOC technique, supplier, input, process, output, customer, that applies equally to the internal audit process. And this is an extract from the lean auditing book that I wrote a number of years ago. So it really concentrates on what is a good process for auditing what really are the outputs that we want from the internal audit department and are we getting them? And then who are the customers that internal audit is working for? I'll say a little bit more about the key changes that you get from a lean uh, audit technique in a minute. Thanks for your time.